Hey, Chuck. Hi, Ira. What's up, man? Good, man. How you doing? Good. Let me go. He's here. Let me go get him. Okay, thanks. How's it going? Good, man. How you doing? Good. Good. Thanks for taking the time. Yes, sir. I'm not going to keep you all day, but is there a time you have you have to be out like right at one or anything? Or? Uh, no, we got okay. time. Okay. Um, well, first of all, uh, do you? I've heard some people call you Ray. Some people call you Rayquan. Does it matter? Do you have a preference? Uh, it doesn't matter to me. Okay. All right. Um, and then um, talking to you when we got to talk to you after the game, you really seem to take that game in stride but i mean that was a you know it's not often that guys go out and score that many points shoot that well have you always been that kind of player that you never really get too high or too low um yeah i feel like that's uh kind of a char characteristic of mine you know um whether i didn't whether i would have not like scored that many points or not you know i still would have been the same person still cheering my teammates on you know still proud of our win and um i feel like you know, that game, just everything was going right. I was hitting on, hitting on all cylinders. So were my teammates. Um, we were on top of all of our assignments. So it was just one of those games where we were hitting on all cylinders and we have to continue to do that. Have you always been that way? Or is that something you've learned, like, from um, maturity? That's something I've learned from maturity. You know, um, growing as a player, especially coming here, it has helped me mature a lot, um, you know, just to take what um, is given. So when things are going good, they're going good. But when things are going bad, you know, you got to, adjust but you know like I said that game everything was going good for us what um I was gonna kind of go back a little bit to last year uh what what was it like playing with Trent um and what kind of things did you learn from him I know you weren't a young guy yeah um <laughs> but uh but you know I'm sure you learned some things from him yeah um it was great to play with Trent you know uh Trent's labeled one of the most winningest uh players in Florida State uh history so um, you know, being able to compete with him every day, you know, pick apart his brain, learn from him when he speaks, you know, he was a great leader. When he talked, people listen. And coming into a new program, the ACC, you know, it's completely different from junior college. So to be able to, um, you know, just pick up on little tips that he's given me here and there, watch him close up, you know, see with him or be with him behind the scenes and practice and things like that. Um, it was a great opportunity to be able to just to watch him and see how he grew as well throughout the year. Did you... Has it taken, or do you, are you guys still in the process of kind of um, filling the roles from those guys that you lost? I mean, you guys lost, I mean, three guys that are in the league and another one's playing professionally. Um, how's that process gone? Um, it's it's been, it's been a different process. You know, a lot of the guys here, a lot of the vets, you know, like Raekwon Gray, MJ Walker, they're assigned to new roles as well. Um, they, you know, they, they understood the roles this last year, but now it's becoming more, they have to be the leaders. So I feel like, our team is um, still learning how to adjust to our roles and accept our roles. So I don't think we've had too much problems with it, but um, as a, like I said, we're still figuring it out. When you, when you came in, I remember coach Ham um, just, I mean, last summer, just, you know, raving about you and he was so excited about you. And then you got the injury. Um, how had, the, was that one of the first times you've had a significant injury and, and what was that process like? Um, yeah, that was one time that was probably that has probably been my most serious injury I've had um, throughout my career. It was, it was pretty difficult. You know, I've never tore a hamstring before. So I'm assuming that maybe I'm only out a couple weeks and then turns out I got to miss, you know, a lot of like preseason play, a lot of preseason practice. Um, so it was definitely difficult for me um, coming back in. You know, I was um, assigned to get trap breathers right away, keep the offensive going. And then it's like I'm trying to catch my breath because I'm not even in shape yet. So. <laughs> I'm trying to adjust to that, um, you know, hitting that burst was a little bit difficult for me, but um, it has taught me a lot and has made me the player I am today. When you, uh, I mean, as a younger player, you, you know, you obviously scored a lot more. Um, and then you come in last year and kind of, you're a, a kind of a role guy, um, you know, like you said, coming off the bench. Uh, was that difficult 
at all or or how did you get into that mindset um it wasn't difficult for me you know coming to this program I understood that I wasn't going to be the guy things are different you know we have multiple guys who were the guys on their teams in high school so um my my mindset coming in was just to play my role do what the coaches want me to do do what my players need me to do and just accept that And if my role changes I'm just gonna have to adapt but just coming in and accepting my role you know moving the ball um, bringing that energy on defense and just being um, a great team player. That's what I set my uh, goals to be when I came into this program. Man, and if it wasn't you, tell me, but I, I think like a, a few couple of games ago, two or three games ago, before a game when you guys go, going through warmups, I thought I saw somebody like catch the ball off the backboard and do like a windmill dunk. And, I, and when I looked, I thought it was you. Was that you? Uh, I don't think it was me. <laughs> okay. Can you, I mean, can you, do you have that kind of, yeah, I have that ability. I just, um, I guess, I just don't really show it much. <laughs> is that? I mean, how 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 have you adapted to that role, though? Again, being a guy that would score, you know, eighteen or twenty points a game, um, to be more of a distributor. And um, do you like this? Do you like the role of? I mean, because you're, you know, you're probably not going to score twenty four or twenty five very often. Um, yeah. Do you like this role? Oh uh, yeah, I actually really enjoy this role. You know, we have a lot of great shooters, a lot of great uh, attackers. So, you know, for me to be able to find those players who can shoot and find those players who are good in their spots, um, I, it, it's a challenge to me because I kind of have to um, shape my mindset into a different mindset of being more facilitator. And I think it's uh, good for me to grow as more as a player because I feel like me being assigned that role, I've seen parts of the game that I've never even realized before. And it's helped me grow and learn more about the game other than just a scorer. What what position did your dad play? Um, I think he played a forward. I can't. Okay. I think he played power forward. Gotcha. Um, and then uh, I think I saw that uh, video that they did on you and see why I talked in the video about um, maybe sometimes you don't realize how good you can be or how great you can be. Is that something he's had a conversation with you about or the coaches in general? Uh, uh, they they stay in my ear sometimes to be more confident. Um, you know, like I said, I'm trying to assign to that role of being a facilitator. So I do, I'll end up passing up a lot of shots because I'm thinking, okay, if I make this drive, I can make this play for the next player. So kind of, um, I kind of shifted from trying to score to just trying to be a facilitator instead of playing in between and, um, right. you know, applying both. So they stay in my ear a lot just to get my confidence up. And, you know, they're in my ear a lot before this game. And I feel like they really boosted my confidence for that. I was wondering, like in that game, it seemed like, I I almost got the sense NC State didn't expect you to be as aggressive as you were. And is that kind of the, what you have to do is take advantage of those opportunities? When Yeah, of course. Um, I just wanted to set a presence early that, you know, if I can draw some attention towards me, then that's going to open up the floor for my guys and I'll be able to facilitate more. So I think just setting that presence early um, kind of helped our team a lot. Um, the, oh, and then, um, you know, with with your Native American heritage, uh, did you know that Florida State, you know, took it as seriously as they do before you either dur during the recruiting process or when you got here, um, that it's not just, you know, the name Seminoles, it's, there is a connection there? Um, I didn't, um, I really didn't, I honestly didn't know that they took it as serious as they did. Um, I see, I noticed that they had the blue jerseys before I came here, but I was like, oh, that's cool. Um, N7, you know, they're representing that. But um, as I got here, I've seen um, how serious it is, you know, like the warmups that we get have like Native American print on it. Um, people around here are talking about they love the blue jerseys, they love the culture. So um, it was a shock for me to see that uh, it was taken that seriously. Does, does, I mean, is that something your family was impressed by or pleased by? Like when, you know, when you let them know, or I guess when they got to see the, the uniforms and all that kind of thing? Oh yeah, my family loved it. Um, my entire, mom's side of my family is Native American. So back home, you know, they're all for it. They loved it. They want to order shirts, all types of things. So they just love the blue jerseys and they just love how um, respectful this program is when it comes to the Native American uh, culture. And then um, what what do you, um, oh, and I was gonna ask about was your relationship with Scotty. Um, you know, he's, he's a young guy, um, but he's also, you know, everybody talks about his basketball IQ and he's seemed to have, he has some maturity about him for his age. What's what's your relationship been like with him? Do you try to be more of a mentor or or how do you guys handle that relationship? Oh, we have a great relationship. Um, he stays in my ear during the game. I stay in his ear during the game. 
you know, if I see something that I feel like he should make an adjustment to, I'll tell him on the side. If he's out of the game and he sees something I should do, he tells me. So we have that respectful relationship. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're both trying to win. So we just stay in each other's ear. We try to help each other throughout the game because I'm still learning as well and trying to adapt to a new role. So um, I think it really, we complement each other really well. And then this team is unique in that you guys, I mean, Anthony can play the point, right? You know, the other Raekwon, can, I mean, you guys have a bunch of guys that can, that can handle the ball. What, what does that give you guys, you think, um, um, as you go through a season? I feel like, uh, I think it gives us um, more of an edge, you know, because realistically, I feel like with programs, you have your main point guard, then you have a backup point guard. But, you know, with this system, we all have to know different positions. So if I'm out, Scotty's out, um, Raekwon Gray can run it, Anthony Polite can run it, MJ Walker can even bring up the ball. So I feel like, um, you know, everybody knowing their positions and um, having that, uh, those different ball handlers uh, helps our program a lot because, I mean, we're not just set on two main guys. Do you have any, um, I mean, obviously, uh, I'm sure you want to play basketball um, professionally, but do you have any other aspirations beyond that, maybe when your playing days are over? Um, I haven't put uh, too much thought into it. Uh, you know, I've just been trying to focus on school and playing basketball. Um, I would like to be a coach one day, um, yeah. as that's always been a dream of mine. So being able to coach or you know, do something with the coaching environment would be great as well. What kind of things do you do you try to pick up from the coaches you guys have um, in terms of, you know, things, do you see things and think, you know, at some, at some point I want to maybe use that or, or emulate that? Um, I feel like I pick up a lot of things from the coaches. Um, you know, preparation. Preparation is one thing I really try to focus on. You know, um, days before games, we're already, they already have it day by day, what we're going to do, what we're going to focus on. So I feel like preparation for me is something that um, I've lacked in a way. So I feel like focusing on that has helped me also this year. But um, and if one day I get into the coaching world, I know preparation is going to help a lot. So I try to pick and pick and choose little things every now and then to really focus on. And is your family able to, to have they been able to see you play in person much? Um, yes, my dad comes to the games because he lives in Charlotte. And my mom, she has came to a couple of games, but my mom's side of the family doesn't get out here much, but my dad comes to quite a bit of games. Gotcha. And is your best, is your dad, since he played the game at a high level, is he, is he coach you still, or is he, or is he let you kind of be your own guy now? Uh, he lets me be my own guy, you know, as a, as a father, he's going to have tips here and there, but that's all he does. He just is enjoying the process as well. So. Cool. Well, thanks for your time, man. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. And good luck this weekend. Thank you. All good? Yep. Thanks, man. I will send this to you as soon as I get it. Okay. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Chuck. Thanks, man. Okay.